You see, variety is used everywhere. It's even used in set design. Did you see on the sets how there's all these extras and all these neat little details? Add extras to your drawings. Use variety. If you're drawing a wall, why not make a little mouse hole with a mouse coming out of the hole, going after some cheese for a, with a space-age mouse trap next to the cheese? Add extras. Use variety. I'm going to draw a hand right here. Very quick sketch. Draw a thumb with different... When you look at your thumb, you see how your thumb hooks down like that? Well, I'll draw that hook right here and then draw some fingers, really loose sketches of the fingers coming down and then adding variety, something different. I'll make a very, very long droopy robe or gown on this character. He's just reaching up for something. Draw some overlapping wrinkles and then you can draw a really quick sketch of a hand. Watch this. There's the bottom of the hand. Think of banana fingers. And there you have some really interesting gestures by our elf. Let's draw that dragon right now. Start with the building block of our cylinder, I mean the sphere, and then draw the front of the nose, almost horizontally across from each other. Let's draw a neat little nose using variety. Remember variety? We'll draw a horn, a short horn. But because we're using variety, I'll put two more coming out from down here, like teeth almost. Look, I'm going to draw a separate part of his nose in the background. Line this up in direction seven. And you see how, almost like a walrus, huh? <laughs> okay, so you use variety and you can make anything happen with your drawing. See, drawing's fun. You can get in a good mood, be positive about it, and just bulldoze over it and make anything happen. Draw this eye and overlap the eye in the background. See, it lines up in direction seven. Put your eyeball there and then using variety again. Let's draw a really interesting horn coming out from the ears. Draw a horn coming over here. Look at it, it can circle around. And the other side can circle around. And you can even make them twisting around each other if you want to using variety. See that nice S curve right there? See how that twists into a little knot above his head? Using variety. And then using variety. Have you ever seen a dragon with really sketchy hair like that? And give him a smile. Sharon and David, are you keeping up with me? Um, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is kind of a difficult little twist to make happen but look at you have lots of extra time after the lesson using a variety with your drawings and you can clean it up and add details later i want to challenge you to design your own face using variety make a different size nose different kinds of eyes ears maybe a different kind of chin chubby or skinny face any kind of face you want but use variety and i want you two to do the same kind of challenge with me all right design a yeah. face it could be a mythical face or something okay sharon and david yeah. all right Draw, 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 draw about 20 or 30 minutes a day. And remember, use variety. Add extras in your drawings. and I am an actor on that stage. <laughs> I'm having so much fun with Elaine Williams, the set designer, because she is showing so many new theatrical ideas for my drawings. Maybe I'll even design a play about Club Day here in the Secret City. By the way, have you joined Commander Mark's Drawing Club? If you haven't, you should. All you need to do is send a drawing to the commander and you automatically become a member of the Secret City Club. This week's activity is of a self-portrait, a drawing of yourself. Here is a drawing by Roland. Oh, it's a great drawing. Handsome lad, that Roland. To get your free 3D club card, ask your mom or dad to help you send a self-addressed stamped envelope to you. New club card, P.O. Box 361, Oceanside, California, 92049. Costuming is important because what we wear says a lot about who we are. We can learn about a character even before he speaks by looking at what he's wearing. You're both wearing costumes. What do you think the character that would wear those costumes would be like? Well, a young cavalier. Right, right. 
And is this for a comedy or for a tragedy? I haven't thought about that much. Mm, the colors are very bright and the patterns yeah. are bold. Must be for a comedy. And you're wearing a cape. Yeah, this looks like someone a rich dude would wear. Yeah, it would be rich. You think yeah. it would be a prince or a king? Probably prince. Probably. Yeah. All right. Costume is, is important, too, because it tells the time period that the play takes place. These are costume designs for a play called Much Ado About Nothing that takes place in the 17th century. These costume renderings are different than the set renderings that we were looking at earlier because all the information that we need to make these costumes is contained in the renderings. For example, this is a costume for Beatrice. We would select the fabric and the patterns based on what we see here. Uh, compare this rendering with the finished costume. Front. And we have the back view as well. You also notice that this costume has interchangeable sleeves. Do you pick out the materials for this yourself? Yes, I do. What I do is paint the, uh, the rendering, and then I go to the fabric store, and I try to match the fabric as closely as possible to what I've drawn. Who saws them? I mean, who saws the costumes? Well, we have costumers. Generally, there'll be six or eight uh, men or women in the costume shop that make these, and we use period patterns well, from the nice. actual time period. Hello, Elaine. Hello, Meta Man. Oh, I'm having a wonderful time wearing this costume that you brought me. It's so much fun. Well, wonderful. You look great in it. Makes me feel like a different person. <laughs> exactly. Do you realize that you're playing Benedict? In this much character right about here. Nothing? Exactly. Yes, it, this looks just like that costume. Oh, oh, let's see. How does it make you feel to wear that? Well, uh, makes me feel like I... I'm royalty. Maybe I'm a duke or a, an earl or something. Uh, exactly. You're a and, prince. A prince? Oh, yeah. I was right. And uh, looking at this costume, I, I think that maybe he moves around a great deal. Uh, with these blousy uh, sleeves and these ribbons back here. Uh, even this wonderful uh, scarf. Did you call this a scarf? It's called a baldric. A baldric. A baldric. Okay. I, I like the fringe an awful lot. So uh, I think he's a pretty happy fellow, too. It's a... Uh, Happy and, and rather wealthy. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes. Now, I noticed there's another drawing here. Is this his, another costume that he wears? Yes, this is what he wears in Act 3. You're wearing a much more informal uh, costume that he's wearing in Act 2. Mm -hmm. He's out about the town. The, the other drawing that you see here is what he would wear to the court mm -hmm. when he dresses up. Well, I really think those costume uh, sketches are really nice and... Uh, I'm really having a wonderful time learning all about theater. And I'm interested in finding out what our club members here have designed for their sets. 